What would you say to someone who wanted to follow in your footsteps? <laughs> Don't know. I would say, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Why? Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local Las Vegas music scene and the people that make it, including me. I'm Josh, and I'm very happy to welcome back friend of the channel, Joey Hines. Say hi, Joey. Hey, what's up, everyone? Thanks for and, watching. Yep, and Joey is here to help me close out Season 1. Uh, later on this week, you're going to uh, see a, a gag reel drop. Hope you check it out. It's hilarious. And it's basically a highlight of all 20 interviews, counting Joey's today, that uh, I, I was able to you know, convince people to come, come do. Uh, it's been an amazing ride, and I really want to thank all of you for watching and for subscribing. Please, if you haven't subscribed, make sure you click subscribe and ring the bell so that you can find out when, you know, more videos come. Uh, also, tell your friends. Really appreciate it. And uh, drop some comments. If you have any a buddy that you want to see on the show or any topics you want me to cover or questions you have, I, you know, please, the more the merrier. In the meantime, welcome back. Hey, thank you. Thanks for having me. That didn't clink. No, I'll try it. There ah, go. there it is. Hmm. It's important to get a good clink. Yes. And to close out season one, uh, he's been through the gauntlet of the first uh, question, so I had to come up with all new questions for Mr. Hines, which will be the questions going forward for uh, season two. Yes. Hmm. Uh, it, for those of you that are just, just joining us, who maybe don't know Joey, and for some reason clicked on a video that said Joey Hines, take two. Thanks for taking the chance. Yeah. Um, he's a serious already. Local, Vegas. And he's been de described as having a sound that might remind you of Daniel Johnston, the magnetic fields, where they might be giants. I also think a little bit of... Um, oh, shit. We talked about them last time. John Green's favorite band. Uh, Mountain Goats. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Mountain yeah. Goats. John, John Darnell. And, yep. Yeah. And yet, at the same time, remains uniquely his own sound. And uh, I really love listening to your lyrics because music is music, but well written and, and tongue in cheek lyrics are, are a thing of beauty. Oh, thank you, sir. No worries. You've also been described by the same person who, uh, as lyrically driven songs, which, again, some songs have are driven by the beat or by the bass line or by, you know, just whatever the, the hook is. And some songs are driven by the lyrics. And I can totally agree with that. I think that. And correct me if I'm wrong, we're going to get to the, the songwriting process, but when you write a song, is it generally starts out with words? Um, it actually, it d does depend. I've done it uh, both ways. Uh, you know, sometimes it starts with a phrase, and usually that's what it is. It's, you know, something enters my head, a, a string of words, and I keep thinking about it, and then I end up making something out of it, you know? But other times it happens the other way around. You know, you start playing guitar, you like, oh, that like, chord change is really nice, and, uh, and you have to come up with something to fill it, so... And then sometimes it happens almost simultaneously. So at this point, you know, I've been writing songs for a while. I've had it happen every which way, you know, right. so I don't know if there's a pattern. But I would say definitely the lyrics, um, for me, that's kind of the heart of it. They, they tend to get a little more care, you know, than, uh, than everything else. Right on. Um, what drew you to music? We talked last time about, you know, what were your early music influences and your current music influences. But what drew you to the music industry? What made you think, hey... I think I want to try doing that, getting on stage, and, and or maybe trying to make, if not a living at it, at least a, 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 a hobby out of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, for me, it was gradual, and over time, I just kind of realized that it was what I was best at. You know, like I was always an artistic person, mm -hmm. um, but I never knew what I was gonna do. You know, I liked writing, I liked like, writing stories and stuff, and I liked acting, um, and I did that for quite a while. Um, but, you know, in between and during all those things, I was always writing songs. Like, when I, when I uh, you know, had something to say or when I just needed to like, work something out for myself, that's what I did. I went to my room, played right. my guitar, wrote songs. And that was just, uh, that's just what worked, you know. And uh, eventually I realized, like, this is, this is better. You know, like, this format just makes sense to me. Like, having a short, condensed thing, you know, because it's, it's different from, like, writing a story. When you write a story, you've got a big, long thing and... Um, you know, it's kind of, it's a little more literal sometimes, you know, whereas with a song, it's like a compact, it's like a piece of poetry over a certain length of time. And, right. I don't know, it just works. Yeah, I agree. Um, I used to say, if you want to know how I'm feeling, listen to what I'm singing. 
like just just yeah, yeah. randomly walking around singing something, and even if it's something off the radio, I'm singing it for a reason. Yeah, yeah, I think. Um, speaking of creative, for those of you that didn't see his last uh, video, link here. You made an art book. It's true. Yes. Or which album was it? Um, it's actually a separate project. Um, oh right, right, right. right. It's, separate um, project. Sorry. Yeah, no, that's okay. The book is called Overwhelmingly Okay. Yep. Um, and it wasn't a time with an album, but there actually is a, a video you can watch, uh, which has some details about the book. The video is also called Overwhelmingly Okay. It's like a short uh, mini documentary. Um, is it on YouTube? YouTube? It is, yeah. Cool. I'll put the link here. I'll get the link from you. Um, and also, uh, here's some artwork from it. <laughs> All right, oh, wow. cool. Uh, it's actually up in room six. I forgot to bring it down. So, oh, cool. But, but yeah, I'll, I'll definitely uh, put it up there. Uh, in fact, now you didn't do any of the artwork... Uh, for your album covers, right? I have not, no. Yeah, who, who did uh, those? There's two that are uh, like a painting cover. Um, mm -hmm. Those are both done uh, by a woman named Susan Jean. Um, she has a company called Rainbow Farts Art. Um, nice. And I like the description. Yeah, and she's fantastic. I went to a gallery of hers. Um, I was really inspired by the way she drew uh, goats in particular, which is why uh, when I did my EP, I used to dream. I, mean, I approached her, you know, I, I want some kind of creature on the front of this who kind of embodies the spirit of, uh, of these songs. And um, she came up with Stefalina the Unigoat. <laughs> you know, her unicorn. Uh, I didn't hear that last time. Yeah. Stefalina the Unigoat. That's uh, it, it's a unicorn, let's be honest. <laughs> so, yeah. Lafay! And, uh, yeah, and then I worked with her again on the album, Bo Bo, uh, when she came up with that wonderful, um, somewhat chicken-like creation, so. Yeah, yeah somewhat chicken-like, that's a good description. <laughs> um, what's an average day like for you? Average day? Well, um, depends on if it's a, you know... Gig day? If it's a gig day, yeah. if it's a day job day, you know. Um, but in general, I like to wake up early, man. I like to wake up... Those morning hours, like, right. when the sun first comes up, like, that's, uh, I find, like, an excellent time to, like, get things done. So, like, I'll, I'll usually try to, like, exercise, I'll try to take a walk, or I might, uh, you know, try to write songs during that time. I might sit down, and, like, because it's kind of nice, like, when you wake up, like, your head's kind of clear. Sure. Like, you had your dream or whatever, you know, you get up, and, like, uh, there's a whole, like, blank slate day ahead of you. So that's a really great time to write, because you never really know what's gonna, your day hasn't happened yet. You don't have a bunch of shit on your mind, you know? So right, right. you can kind of, uh, you know, just, you never know what's going to come out of you uh, during those early morning hours. So I like to uh, sometimes just sit down with my phone and, like, record and uh, uh, just see what happens and try to come up with something new, you know? And then uh, typically after that, um, you know, I'll eat some breakfast. Uh, I don't know how much detail I want to get into here. I'll go to work, just maybe. Average day, you know. Um, and then I'm lucky with my day job. Um, I work at a public library. That's right. And, um, Which one? What kind of job? Spring Valley Library. Spring Valley. Yeah. Spring Valley, say hi. And um, it's a really great gig. It's really fulfilling work. Um, it's fun, and it's very consistent. So I tend to have evenings free, mm -hmm. uh, which is good for, you know, going out and playing music. Um, I try to take gigs. I try to do at least one every month or two. Right. And um, when I'm not doing gigs, I tend to be at open mics a lot uh, just to... Um, keep my chops up to stay in front of people, stay uh, sharp. Oh, I like to do that, yeah. Yeah, and it's also a great place to meet other artists and other people here in town. So. Cool. Now, um, how much interaction do you have with your fans? Um, at this point, at the stage, you know, I am at, like, pretty much all my fans, I, I know somehow. You know, they right. are... Um, they're a friend, or they're a family member, or they're a friend of a friend who maybe um, I met them because of my music, actually. Like, maybe my friend you know, posted or shared something of mine, and this person, uh, you know, said, you know, they liked it, and they, sure. they uh, you know, contacted me or something. But when that happens, like, I always try to, uh, to get to know them a little bit. I like to be, you know, just as approachable and uh, personable as possible, you know? Uh, like, if people find the music and... Um, they like it, like, I'm okay with, like, if you are watching this video and you don't know me or something, like, feel free to just go on Facebook and add me as a friend or something. I mean, mm -hmm. um, yeah. And all his links for his social media uh, will be down in the doo-doo-doo. Doo-doo-doo. Um, what would you say, let's talk music industry as a whole. We've all got our gripes. We've all got our least favorite parts of it. 
Is there one thing that like you're really pet peeve about the music industry in, uh, in Vegas? You know, it's just um, the the grind of it. You know, you got to be kind of an entrepreneur. You got to be yeah. your own like hype man. You know, unless you, you want to hire someone to do it all. And um, that's the part I had to learn. You know, like I always had a really uh, you know strong uh, sense of like what works as art. Mm-hmm. Um, but promoting myself was very hard because I'm not, I don't know, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't like begging people to pay attention to me, you know? That's, that's why I made the channel. Yeah, that's almost like what you have to do, you know, especially when you're booking gigs and stuff, you got to send out, mm-hmm. you know, emails. Um, or you have to find, a, like, a manager or somebody to do the, the legwork for you. Yeah, yeah. And then you take whatever you get. Um, for me, it's kind of the oversaturation, which is right that, like, getting, a, especially in, like, an original or singer-songwriter gig, you almost throw a dart and you know find a place that you can you can go and play, maybe even get money. But there's just if you're trying to actually make a living at it, it's it's a grind, like you said. And um, there's what I'm coming, what I'm finding is there's two types of artists or bands or musicians. There's the one that's like I don't like performing live that much, so when I perform, it's a special deal, hmm. and they get a big turnout usually. For that one, you know, once in a while thing, and then there's the ones who are like, we want our name to be known by everybody in this town, you know. So we play a uh, lot, you know, like Roxy Gun Project, you know, and also Crimson Ride, which is their punk side. They play a lot, and good on you. Um, to, it seems like there's this, um, it's a double-edged sword. The more if you play a whole bunch, people will tend can be like, oh, well, I'll catch you next week. Yeah, that's a thing that happens, you know, like yeah. if you're playing, you know, two weeks in a row or something, yeah, people will say that. They'll say, oh, you know, Joey plays yeah. all the time. I'll just see him next time. I'm, I'm literally down the street from your, your usual watering hole. What, what the hell? Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Um, so for me, um, that's why, you know, I try to keep it. I try to play frequently enough that I'm out there and playing, right. you know, but um, not too frequently. So people don't, mm-hmm. I don't know, <laughs> get hurt out or whatever. Um, speaking about shows... Joey's next show is uh, this Friday, the 11th of uh, October. It's true. Friday, October 11th. At uh, Hardway 8, a mm-hmm. venue I want to check out and hopefully play with my jazz band, because I understand they're looking for a jazz band, too. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, Dirty Martin. And, yes, DirtyMartinsLV.com. <laughs> uh, you are playing with Adam and Patterson and the Heavy Hearts. Oh, yeah, you noticed that. Yeah, yeah. Um, Adam Patterson and the Heavy Hearts, they are fantastic, man. They are like a alternative uh, country outfit. Um, well, it must be alternative to hell with Texas. Yeah, right? Jeez. I know, huh? Not something you hear in country very often. But uh, they're, they're from Alaska, actually. Uh, <laughs> they're, uh, yeah, they... Uh, wait, 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 wait. Alaska has country music? <laughs> apparently, yeah. <laughs> I guess I could see that. Adam's the only Alaskan uh, country artist I've met. But um, it, yeah. it, it does make some sense. You know, they're single to hell with Texas. I heard him introduce that song at... Uh, Recently, at a performance, and he said, "You know, Alaska's actually bigger. You know, Texans don't like it. Yeah, it's the biggest <laughs> state. It is. Um, actually, would you call it Jewel Country? Um, she. I put her in like folk world. I don't like the category. Yeah, no, really, no, she was. But, she's folk. Well, she she did. She became more country later on, right? Like, the Jewel I listen oh, yeah. to, you know, Pieces of You, is more, mostly her folk Ooh, stuff. Hey, you know, so. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, okay. I'm sure I know the answer to this. But have you ever dealt with performance anxiety? Oh, yeah. Um, or rather, how do you deal with performance anxiety? Because I'm sure it has been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I was just talking with a friend about this. Like, you know, I've been playing for years, and I still get nervous before shows, man. It's weird. Like, I get, I, I get psyched out. And, but uh, I think a little bit of that is probably good. It's mm-hmm. good to um, be a little bit concerned with um, how your performance is going to go so that you can, you know, take a... Precautions to make sure it goes well, you know. Um, and uh, I feel like if I, to borrow a, something that my friend Mandolin recently said, like I feel like if I didn't get nervous, mm-hmm. that would make me nervous. <laughs> I like that I should put that. Yeah, um, and, and I've had the experience where it's a repeat gig. You've done it many times. You know exactly what the crowd is going to be like and what to expect, and you kind of you don't feel nervous, and that's when you tank. That's when it's a train wreck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, being I think that if you if you can harness that fear that that a little bit of anxiety into pay attention to what I'm doing on stage, pay attention to how you know to, to what's going on and what the band is doing and the, the audience, 
it then you're, you're you're it's a little bit more of a heightened awareness, and you tend to have a better gig. Absolutely, yeah. It's about channeling that nervous energy. Also, the time just flies when you're on stage. It's true, man. Yeah. Um, what would you say to someone wanting to follow in your footsteps? <laughs> don't. Know. I would say, <laughs> wow. Why? Yeah. <laughs> please don't do that. No. Uh, like, we're kind of libraries. Um, I if someone I. I'd take it to mean, you know, if someone wanted to, um, you know, write music and they wanted mm-hmm. to write songs and, um, you know, perform as a singer-songwriter, um, I would just tell them, man, just, you got to just be yourself. You've got to write the songs that you, you got, you got to try not to, um, you got to not try to fit into boxes that already exist. You know, you got to, uh, first, before you do any of that, you got to just write you know, from the heart and you got to see what comes out and you got to see what your, uh, you know, what your song is, what your kind of heart song is, I guess. Yeah. Um, and then go from there, you know, and then find the people who are doing um, something similar. You know, that's that's how I did it. You know, I I always uh, wrote music that was a little bit weird, a little bit quirky, you know, I'm kind of a little bit of a dork, and um, I like funny songs, but I also like, you know, uh, things that are more heartfelt, too. Um so eventually, that's how I found uh, people like Daniel Johnson and people like the Magnetic Fields is, um, you know, just by looking around and seeing who is doing, you know, what I'm doing, who, who you know, does, whose music has some humor to it, but isn't just, you know, novelty, you know, like humor music, you know, who, who is, uh, who's writing like that, basically. Cool. Um, okay, let's, let's move a little bit into... Aside from the creative outlet, what do you enjoy most about being a musician? Um, Forgot the dishwasher was running. Sorry about all the background noise. Dishwashers. Um, About being a musician, aside from um, the creative aspect of it, um, I don't know how separate this really is, but it's really fun to be able to uh, look back on. You know, to look back on, like, a my own uh, songs and the stuff I've written, you know, um, sometimes years later, you know, sometimes, um, sometimes I look at it because I, uh, you know, I don't know what to write about right now, you know, and I need like maybe some inspiration. So I'll look back and I'll think, oh man, so many times I look at stuff and I'm like, I can't believe I like said that like right. five years ago because I've had the same thought like recently and I don't remember thinking that before, but that sometimes um, startles me is like the, um, the, the, unexpected like consistency of like who I am as a person like you know I feel mm-hmm. like I've like changed a lot over the years but then I'll listen to some old song and I'll be like no I like, guess pretty much <laughs> yeah. still still what's going on I've done uh, I've had the same moment of, of just like so I really was the same person back then I just didn't know it and I needed my music I needed the process of making the music and singing to you know figure it out yeah, yeah. that's I, the hard oh go ahead oh yeah um I was just gonna say the other thing that's great about uh you know, playing music, aside from, you know, my own creative experiences, is uh, just, it's a great way to connect with people and to meet other people and other artists in the town, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, I found, like, it, it's crazy. Like, I feel like I know so many cool, like, artsy people already, but, like, no matter, like, um, how many I meet, like, I keep meeting more. Like, wherever I go, there's always, like, cool people, like, uh, sure. trying to do creative things. So. Like I said, oversaturation also means... A lot of musicians. Yeah, definitely. It's easy to start a band in this town. It's hard to keep the band. True. Yeah. Um, what I was going to say was if, uh, or rather the uh, the hardest part about being a singer or songwriter starting out is figuring out your voice, a lot of what you said, and also just who am I, what am I trying to say? You know, am I, am I trying to, do I want to create a persona like Marilyn Manson? Or, you know, do I want to just be myself and let the people that like that find me. It, it, it's it's it, it is hard. It's a decision, yeah. Yeah. the the, the best uh, the best thing I heard was you you have a choice. You reach at some point you reach the crossroads. You reach you reach a point where you you would choose to either be an artist or a product. Hmm. And you are an artist. And hopefully, things like Road Six hopefully get your products out there without turning you into a product, you know? <laughs> sure. And I think you become a product when, hey, you sound like so-and-so, that's really famous. 
You know, like if somebody said you sound like Britney Spears, I'd be like, okay, I need to change my sound. She's got her own thing. I need to figure out who I am. Kind sure, of sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's a, it's a good distinction to, you know, talk about. Um, and I think you're right, you know, and um, I think there's more pressure to do that. You know, if you are trying to, uh, you know, do your music as a job, you know, uh, right. which at this point in my life, like I'm not really doing, you know, I have a good balance. I have a day job um, mm -hmm. that I like. And because of that, I have the freedom to write whatever kind of music I want without being uh, financially dependent on, you know. I think that makes um, you enjoy it too, better. Maybe so. Yeah, I don't know. Well, you, we've seen um, the Dead Eye Casino guys. <laughs> you're, you know, playing the same songs. Well, yeah, yeah. So well, also, um, so much of the money's in cover games, you know, so you can... Eh, yeah. yeah, dirty martinis. Yeah. But, but, you know, speaking of, like, that is something we're trying to make into a product to market for the sweet, sweet corporate money. Uh, uh, but uh, but also, you know, we're putting our, our... We're still putting our spin on things, and we're exploring the songs as musicians... As opposed to trying to write some jazz songs, uh, which is a whole other level. Sure, sure. Um, speaking of changing, changing, you know, your sound and that whatever. If you could change anything about the industry, what would it be? About the industry, about Las Vegas music. Yeah, not Las Vegas music. Um, I, uh, oh, I just would like to see uh, more um, support from. Uh, from artists, you know, for artists, you know, like I like whenever there's a uh, like a showcase type thing for specifically like local, like original music. Um, like there's a cool one going on right now at um, a place called Goat Sports Bar. Yes, um, uh, I, I know quite a few people who are playing there. Uh, Johnny Zig in the Force, okay. and um, who else did I just see post a thing? But yeah, uh, I haven't been there. Want to? It's kind of like you sit set up in the corner, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just like a little like a uh, sports bar space. You play on the floor. It's not right. really like a stage. But it's but, supportive. Um, well, yeah, and um, they have a Monday night like local showcase. Um, I think it's every two weeks right now. Okay. Um, and um, they just started a month or two ago. Um, but I really like that. Like they, you go and you see, you know, three or four local acts, you know, doing um, you know original music usually. And um, that's just really cool. I like that format. I like right. like the regularity, and I like getting to go see other people who are doing something, you know, in the world uh, that I am. And um, I like that, and I think that's kind of uh, the way to go, you know, is um, something regular, something um, that that's how you build a community, you know. Uh, you have everyone come together and do events together and build each other up. And then, Definitely. Um, yeah. And it's not just acoustic there, either. No, no, no. There will be bands yeah. there. So I, know, I know John Zig. They're, like, uh, basically blues. But, you know, electric. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, uh, as I've said before, that's why I bring you guys to me, because I just don't have the time, money, or liver to go to everything I want to go to. I went out last night, actually. I'm still recuperating. <laughs> <laughs> we talked last time about, uh, I know on your latest album, your brother helped out a lot, right? Your brothers? Two brothers, yeah. Two yeah. brothers. Have they helped you on any other albums? Yeah, in fact, um, this is a good time to plug myself, but um, plug. next week, uh, that show I'm doing October 11th, it's going to be a release show um, for a new record. Um, the one at Hardway 8? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be there. I plan on it. Yeah, October 11th, Hardway 8, um, releasing a new EP. Ooh. It's uh, the third in a trilogy um, that was begun with the previous two. Uh, don't laugh at don't me. Make fun of me. Don't make fun of me, sorry. Yeah, don't make fun of me, and then, okay, you can make fun of me now. And, um, What's it called? It's called. I haven't revealed it yet. Ah! Um, I want to review it. it. I want to review it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, you'll see. There's a there's a third, and it kind of completes the story. But yes, there is another. Um, there's another track on there um, with uh, my brother Mike on bass and my brother Dave on drums, um, which has been so fun to you know work with them on that, uh, right. especially because you know they they're my brothers and sure. I kind of learned music from them originally, so it's been cool to be able to. Um, you know, still connect on that throughout our lives. I know. Hmm. Do you remember your first gig? Ooh, first the gig. The first one where Joey Hines is performing. <laughs> Not like I'm part of the school group or whatever. Um. Because I know you were a theater kid. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's a whole other level world. But so what, first what, gig. Do you remember your first like telling people, hey? I'm playing over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whether well, it was an open mic or, or what. The first thing 
and this will be probably funny to Grant, who's probably watching, but um, I Grant? think it was like 2010. And, um, they had music back then? I, <laughs> ancient history, folks. Um, Nine but, years ago. Yeah. And uh, there's a place called Unite, or there's an event called Unite. It was at a church. It was that like it one was, of those? It was like, in Vegas, right? Yeah, yeah. It was like one of those like fancy like modern churches where there's like you know rock bands all the time or something. Right. Um, and they had this event called Unite, and it was like all these like just local musicians. Um, but it was uh, it was like some kind of like donation based like door deal like you had to pay like a dollar to get in and you had to tell them like who you were there so for. it was a cover gig yeah, yeah i mean yeah. a cover a cover door right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. um and then like the person who like it was some kind of competition or something uh, the person who had like the most like uh you know people there for them got like all the money or something it was actually like a terrible deal uh, yeah that sounds terrible <laughs> yeah that's not how this works um, at all but um it was funny and it was funny because it was like in a church and it was for like it was like young people there but they were kind of like churchy young people, and even right. at the time, like, I had some material that was a little, I you know... A little tongue-in-cheek? Uh, yeah, yeah, a little profane or something, so I, I had to, um, I remember censoring a few of my songs for the first time, kind of and, yeah. and um, trying to find funny ways to do it. Probably didn't have those, uh, those, uh, shirts. I didn't have them yet, no, <laughs> no, I should have, that would have been brilliant. I, right on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my, I remember my first gig was actually at a living room. It was called the living room. It was a it was a little coffee shop place called the living room. It was a house in San Diego. I don't even know if it's still there, but um, I was uh, rooming with a guy. We we're both musicians, both trying to figure out our like how to do this. And um, he, we both played guitar. He was more of the he introduced me to Metallica, that kind of guy. Uh, Brett, if you're watching by some weird freak, reach out to me because I have tried to find you, man. I can't. <laughs> What's going on? How are you doing? I hope you're okay. Come on, Brad. Yes. You? If you know... No, I don't want to do that. I don't <laughs> want to do that. I don't want to put, put the hounds on him. But <clears throat> anyway, uh, I've got a letter opener, actually, that my dad uh, came to the show. And it was such a big deal that it was my first time doing it in front of people that he gave me the letter opener, and it was engraved with the, the, the name of the place and date of the show. Hmm. And I was just like... That's really cool, man. That's really cool. It's a weird gift, but okay. <laughs> um, and that's where I got kind of comfortable, literally, like, people are just sitting in a chair, just lounging, just right there in front of me. Um, stepping up to where you're playing on an actual big stage, that was a whole other level. I'm, that was a fair, I think, <laughs> in San Diego. Um, all right. Now, your first instrument was not guitar, right? I started with the piano, yeah. Right. Which, are you playing some piano for us today? I plan to, yes. Good. Are you playing guitar for us today? I am. Okay. I'll have to move some stuff. I'm just <laughs> kidding. Um, I love having guests like Joey on that are like more than one type of uh, instrument because it allows us to see different sides. There's a different process writing a guitar song to a piano song. Mm -hmm. It just is. That's the way it is. And, and when you sing it, you can do things with guitar or with piano. You can't do with the other one. Um, obviously, grow, you grew up music, in a musical household. Mm -hmm. Your parents also? I, I forget. Um, they're not musicians, actually. Uh, they are music appreciators uh, in the extreme, but um, yeah, they're not. Uh, they don't play instruments. Right. Um, they sing for fun, but they don't really, you know, sing, sing, and yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So now let's see here. You've you've been in some competitions, right? Um, I try, try to avoid those. <laughs> right, but I thought I remember reading something about how you, you're in a songwriter competition or, or something. Oh, not recently. Uh, no, 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 just in your life. But, um, you know, no, maybe okay. it was one of the ones that I meant to sign up for. I missed uh, the deadline. That happens to me once in a while. Okay, but, I, I have entered, never won. But um, it's, if you ever want honest feedback from someone who doesn't know you, and is, is like listening to a ton of music. Go ahead and, and you know, enter in any sort of songwriting competition or um, uh, there was a website called helloworld.com that was offering free re CD reviews. Hmm. And I sent it in. I was actually, I used it on my website because uh, it was it was pretty good. Um, and anything like that, any sort of feedback you can get that isn't from somebody who's invested in, in, in 
keeping you emotionally happy, like loved ones, your friends, whatever, that's gold, Even if, if, especially if it's negative, because that's what you can work on. I know that music is, is we're, we're doing it because it's coming from our heart and, and from our history. We're using it as a catharsis or we're using it as just, you know, really trying to get what's in here out. But you have to learn how to be able to step away objectively, listen to what people are saying about it, so you can go back and not necessarily write music to make other people happy, but to make it so that I'm, I'm playing this and I know from market research, <laughs> I know from the focus groups that some people, you know, should like it, so I'm more comfortable doing it kind of thing. Hmm. And it's, it's a tightrope of, do I write music for me or do I write music for what people might like? And what I've found is if you try to do both, you tend to get both. But that's just me. Yeah. I'd like to tag onto that a little bit um, because it is like, it, when, you, when you get feedback on, you know, your music as a musician, that's kind of invaluable. You're like, oh, yeah, this person is like taking the time to tell me what they like thought, you know, and that's cool. Um, and I agree with you, like, even if it's like negative, you know, um, you can learn a lot from that. So it's, it is good to, you know, reach out to um, sources that aren't just your family and friends who are going to kind of love everything, you know. Um, but, um, I also do, I think if you do that, you do got to be careful and you got to make sure, um, that you yourself, um, are able to say a little bit of objective about it and not take it personally. And right. if you can, um, don't just depend on one random person who you don't know. It's, it's good to maybe find a, um, a, f a few different opinions at least. Um, because, uh, I know like, are you familiar with Reddit, the social media? Uh... No, what, what's Reddit? The newspaper, <laughs> the, the, the newspaper uh, of the internet? No, I never I don't heard think it. anyone's supposed to admit they go on Reddit in real life. But, um, yeah, I actually, yeah. I've been meaning to get my account set up so oh, okay. I, I, I can get, you know, stuff like Room 6 up there. But yeah, but, I've posted yeah. like um, songs in, you know, subreddits, like uh, Acoustic Originals is a cool one. Um, and sometimes people are a little bit rude. Um, yeah, but like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, but then, you know, those same songs that I'll get negative feedback on, sometimes, um, you know, someone else I meet will will tell me they really like that one. Like, specifically, they'll be very genuine about, like, I really enjoy that one. So you also got to remember, not not everyone's going to like every song, you know? And yeah. Different, there are different strokes for different folks. I'm not familiar with Reddit. How old do you think I am? <laughs> Jeez. I'm, I'm hep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so how often do you practice? Um, I, uh, practice, try to at least, like, pick up guitar or right. piano, like, once a day. And that's a challenge sometimes, because yeah. you get busy. Do you most, is it mostly but, just going over the stuff you've already written? Like, how, like, I guess the better question is, how often do you actually, or, like, this is, this is kind of speaking to that person who wants to follow in your footsteps, or, you know, new musicians who are struggling with writing their own stuff. How, how often do you, do, do you have a set time where you're like, I'm going to start, today's a creating day, today's a, a new song kind of day, or is it just yeah. I've done it before. Um, right now I'm kind of um, kind of in between systems, but yeah, the, probably my most productive was when I uh, was uh, taking 15 minutes every day and coming up with something completely brand new mm -hmm. and just recording them on my phone, and like I wasn't, I wasn't allowing myself to like edit old songs, I wasn't, you know, reworking things, I was just like... Um, I'm going to put a new whole idea. other rabbit holes editing the old stuff. <laughs> and um, it was great. And I came up with so many ideas, you know, where, like, you know, it's kind of interesting to think about. Like, if I hadn't sat down, right, right, this, right. Would not, this would not have happened. This song would never have existed, you know? And, of course, when you do that, you know, most of the songs, don't get me wrong, they're junk. You know, like, I, they're, <laughs> I'm never going to play them again. Um, but but it, you do it because once in a while you get one and it just comes out of nowhere. And you're like, that was... This is one of the good ones, you know. I want to work this up into an right. actually good piece. So. I love that moment where you're just messing around with guitar or whatever, and you hit a weird chord, and you're just like, "Ooh, yeah, ooh, let's try something. Let's do this." Um, I I don't practice that much anymore because I'm super busy doing this in, in life, and that's a bad excuse, I know. But I'm not trying to play out either. Quite frankly, uh, I, my, when I practice, it's practicing the dirty martini stuff. So the singer-songwriter part of me ha is slightly in hiatus. Um, however, I also have some stuff floating around that I'm like, oh, you know, that'd be good to work on. But uh, what I, when I was regularly practicing, it was sit down, practice the stuff I know I need to do for this upcoming gig or I know that I, I'm, I'm having trouble with. Practice that. I, I practice, and, and then the reward is, right now I'm going to mess around with 
something new, something I want to. Oh yeah, you know, cool. And, and that was my reward to myself because if I didn't do it that way, I I, I just put off the hard stuff. Or I put off the ah, I should run through Brown Eyed Girl a couple times, make sure <laughs> it's. I'm happy with it, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, no, that's a challenge. Like, I've been playing for years. I have so, a big back catalog of songs I've written, but I hardly ever play yeah. a lot of them, you know? So um, it's a challenge to keep a repertoire, you know, up to... Uh, anybody yell, and anybody ever yell out old stuff to you? Not yet. <laughs> Someday, maybe. Remember um, the Joey Hines show? <laughs> Make sure you yell out. So go through his back catalog. <laughs> um, and also, where you're... Uh, where you're... Where you're Cheap Joe Hens t-shirt. Yes. Um, Which you can buy at this link. Can we do that? Can I do that? Never done that before. At this link? It will be... <laughs> no, because unfortunately... Oh, never mind. I don't have... An, I have not reached the critical subscriber level that YouTube has put in place where I can have an outside link just up here. Oh, I see. So the links will be down in the description. Oh. Yeah. Forget I said anything. Yes. But look um, in the description. Yeah. It, it's a, a sad truth. Uh, if you don't know how YouTube works... I'm not even worried about getting monetized. I just want to be able to do things like have a link appear, like my Patreon page, which is down in the description, or my, the Dirty Martini's website, which is here, or his website, which is here, or, you know, any of that. I can't do that with just YouTube's, you know, card thing uh, until I hit 1,000 subscribers within a 12-month period and 4,000 watch hours. I'm working on it, and uh, thank you, everybody that's that's helped me get there. It's it's hard because I'm not PewDiePie, and I'm I'm not putting out the kind of stuff that is clickbait. We talked about this earlier. I'm trying to put out stuff that is supportive of the scene and and is uh, um, you know I'm happy with, and that hopefully the guests are happy with, or the viewers are happy with, and uh, you know. I might, maybe soon I'll start playing with liquid nitrogen and, you know, doing all sorts of other weird things, but <laughs> not, not right now. Yeah. So share the videos. Yes, this please. Guy, this guy's doing really cool stuff. Like, share, and subscribe. Um, last question. Okay. How do you balance? I mean, we've already talked a little bit about you're not playing enough to where it's a total, like, uh, infringement on your personal life or your work life. But do you have any issues with that? With, um... Yeah. Sometimes, you know, like uh, relationships or whatever, you're, you're like, I'm sorry, but I really got to focus on this. It is it's a it is a balance. That's the word for it. Um, it's a challenge. And um, I've, you know, only recently, within like the past year, I think, um, found the place where I'm really, where I think it's sustainable, you know? Like yeah. I, uh, was, I did a lot of work with music a couple years back, and then I kind of got... Uh, burnt out. It was around the time I got that full-time job, you know, which is nice and yeah. in some ways, but it, it does take up a lot of time. Um, and, you know, between, um, you know, having a social life and uh, also just having time for yourself uh, for whatever you need to do um, is a challenge, man. It's 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 hard work. So um, I do have, like, I have rules for myself now. It's, it's uh, funny, but, like, I, I try not to go out more than, like, twice a week, which... Um, when you say go me, out, you mean just like go out and drink and have fun or what? No, I'm sorry. I mean specifically for a music related event. Oh, okay. Like, gotcha. So for an open mic or a show, um, uh, you know, I I try to say like I'm going to have two nights and that kind of makes me selective, you know, like I'm, that makes me say these are the ones I really want to do. This is what's important. It makes you kind of, forces you to prioritize, you know. Right. Um, so that's good. And then um, that leaves me the rest of... Uh, you know, my nights to um, hang out with my girlfriend, to uh, see friends and family and, um, you know, keep those relationships, you know, in my life, um, right. you know, good. And uh, and then I try to, if I can, I try to have the day of the week where I just don't really have a plan. And I'm not planning on going and seeing anyone and I'm not planning on going out that's, and playing. That's, that's the tough one. It, that, is a, that is a real challenge, but it's so invaluable if you can make that work because... Uh, because then you really find out, you know, like, what it is you uh, kind of need from, from yourself in that time. You do, you do any gaming? I do, yeah. Yeah, that's, for me, um, I, uh, I'm kind of sort of an Xbox, you know, gamer, sort of. But finding the time to just be like, oh, wait, wait, wait. All right, I don't have to make 
I, I can, I, I, you know, my, my kids are to sleep over. My, <laughs> my wife is, you know, reading a book or whatever. I, I, I'm all caught up on YouTube, on room six stuff and I have, I have nothing I'm currently editing. It's a really rare moment. And, um, when it happens, I'm like, can I do this without feeling guilty? I know, right? No. Yeah, there's like okay. a, there is like a, um, yep. it's hard to do sometimes without uh, psyching yourself out about it, which yeah. is so weird because it's the most, uh, you know, it's a way to relax, you know, but yeah, um, yeah no, I feel you there, especially because I have a taste for like really long RPG games and uh, like what? Mostly like, like JRPG, like Final Fantasy type, like turn based retro style stuff. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, so those games all take like 40, 50 hours, you know, just to finish right. the main story. So I hardly ever finish anything. So uh, just, it's just hard to find the time. But I, I tend to bounce around stuff. between um, really short, kind of like, I have 10 minutes and I can do something, kind of, you know, like a fiber game or oh, yeah, yeah. one of those. And the uh, the open world, quest based kind of solve, figure out, I'm here, what am I supposed to do? Where is this thing supposed to be? Kind of. James, I'm on. Uh, I'm playing We Happy Few right now. Have you played that? Uh huh. It's a trip. But enough about that. We're here for music. He's got some new songs for us. I do, yeah. Off the new album. Correct. Squeak. So, I I've ne- been neglectful. I didn't have any of your previous CDs or your art or book or nothing up here. Oh. But they'll be up in room six. So stick around. We're gonna have Joy Hines making some music. And uh, thanks for coming. And we'll be right back in room six. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Yeah! (laughs) Hey, Joey Hines here at room six. This is Never Meet Your Heroes. train out of town you went where you could not be found you meditated for 100 years a life dictated by your wildest fears tie me up and tie me down you know i love being pulled around you spat casual cruelty as you smile how could you think those things about a child never meet your heroes Never meet your heroes, baby Never meet your heroes Color me in disbelief, you Always were a charming thief, you Took whatever you could lay hands on You said no one will ever know it's gone I held you in the highest regard, you Broke my heart and broke it hard, you Imagine my surprise when suddenly The victim of your noble crime was me Never meet your heroes, baby Never meet your heroes Never meet your heroes, baby Never meet your heroes Should I look more deeply? Is it right to try to learn to love your flaws? What are the limits of forgiveness? Should I permit you to heal the pain you are?
more deeply Is it right to try to learn to love my flaws? What are the limits of forgiveness? Could I ever feel the pain I caused? Who's gonna scream a song to sleep? Who's gonna crack my spine? Who's gonna keep and make me weep? Who's gonna pour my wine? It's helpful and it's bad for me It makes me laugh and cry I sing and set my spirit free Until my throat is dry Who's gonna tell me fear is real and nightmares justify? Who's gonna confirm all I feel, bringing truth inside? Who's gonna be as sad as me now that you've gone away? Who's gonna meet my misery? Let it not be okay. I'm having trouble telling if our love is real the way it's supposed to be I am kissing you, but it doesn't feel like you're kissing me We're no strangers, darling, we've been going steady But there's this look in your eyes 
did you fall out of love and just forget to tell me you're so silly sometimes are you serious about this cause I'm not young anymore when things get tough will you persist cause if not there's the door you keep canceling dates, but not till the last minute Your homework's tying you down I'm a patient guy, but even I have my limits I can't keep waiting around I try to tell myself that you're just really busy It'll be better someday I think I know that you don't even miss me I'm too old for this game Are you serious about me? Or am I just one of your options? Will I be your one and only? Or is your heart a option? It's a shame to see you go We sure have had our moments when a dog's had her day She's gotta be put down Darling, you should've known this Have to end up this way You don't seem too broke up You barely seem affected You're probably doing just fine I guess I don't know what else I should have expected you never sentimental kind are you serious about anything? Or do my words go right through you? Will you direct your own destiny? Or will life just happen to you? Oh, 
it's hard to cling to Talking about how you longed for love While I was worshipping you Something crazy, oh yeah. I'll see you on the news and I'll say, Hey, I know that lady. We used to hang out in gas stations back in the 1980s. Gas station coffee. Makes you think of me Oh yeah Gas station coffee Makes you think of me What a life to have lived To be in your Oh, I hate being home alone Ever since you went on vacation I play games on my phone Trapped like a fly in isolation There's nothing to do but play games on my phone Or lie in my bed And remember the times when I had a girlfriend There's nothing to do except read a book Or go for a walk or write a song Oh, I hate being home alone Ever since you got that new job Working at the TV store Selling people TVs so they can take them home And watch them when they're alone Someday my Prince Charming's gonna come Someday life's not gonna seem so long Someday life's not gonna seem so wrong Oh, I hate being home alone Ever since my dog moved out Ever since my grandma died Ever since you dumped me Ever since my band broke up I've been alone all my life when I when I was home alone when I was home alone when I was home alone I want to thank Joey Hines for dropping by it was a great interview and a great performance and uh Thanks, man. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Josh. This was a pleasure. No worries. Um, if you'd like to support the content you like, such as this, please consider clicking the Patreon link down below or any of the other links. If you buy one of my CDs, hey, who knows? If you'd like to check out Joey's stuff and buy one of his CDs, go ahead and go to his site, which will be down in the description as well. If you'd like to see Joey's other interview with me or other interviews, click here. If you'd like to subscribe, click here. Remember to be amazing, and we'll see you next time in Room 6. Say Thank bye. you so much. Okay.